So, uh, hello everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, my name is Abdullah Afsal. I'm your host for this part of the MacFest, uh, introducing a, a comedy legend in just a moment. Um, I'll also be doing the Berry MacFest, uh, which will be later on this year, as well as the Arab Heritage uh, MacFest, um, which will be later on in the year as well. Uh, if you haven't seen me before, I've done many of these. First of all, Matt Fest, I did it last year, uh, which was fantastic. I did it before the whole COVID um, thing started, which was a, a live, a live uh, Matt Fest uh, at the Muslim Heritage Centre in Manchester. Um, I'm obviously an actor and comedian, writer, someone who sits at home now most of the time. Um, but that's what I do. But thank you very much for joining us. We've got a fantastic comedian coming up. He's going to be great. Um, you know, I hope everyone's uh, locked down, the whole isolation thing, all of that's going okay and fine. You know, you learn a lot about yourself during lockdown, you know, things you didn't know. You know, uh, I, you know I was reminded quite, quite brutally that I was married uh, when lockdown kicked in because I've forgotten all about it. <laughs> um, that was one thing. Second, you know what? I, I, I've started to do weird things. So um, I've, I've started new hobbies. I started knitting. Yeah, I've started to spend time with my cats. I've started doing that thing where I look out the blinds every time someone walks past it. In other words, I've, I've turned into a 73-year-old woman. Um, that's what I identify as now, a 73-year-old woman called Margaret. So uh, feel free to call me Margaret if you wish. Uh, and if there's anyone from the press watching, I am joking. Don't, you know, don't put it in the Muslim daily news, uh, Muslim man identifies as old woman um but yeah look we've got a fantastic comedian um this guy i have toured with him for many years uh, he was a legend when i joined uh, this comedy thing and uh, he's still a legend now he's been in loads of shows um, of course man like mobine fleabag he's been in a movie with riz ahmed um he's been about he's been about you know He's an old cat that's been around and his comedy is very fresh and refreshing as well. He's, he's not an outdated man, although he looks like a prune. Uh, his comedy is not. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, everyone uh, to a good friend of mine, a fantastic comedian and the legend that is known as Jeff Mirza. Take it away, Jeff. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Hope you well out there. This lockdown, you know, this lockdown, it's basically, I, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling this lockdown. This lockdown is just basically me back as a child again, because that's what life was growing up. You were in lockdown. Yeah. Okay, you stay at home. That's what life was. It was a whole lockdown, you know, your dad telling you what to do. So this is no different for me. Anyway, so hope you're enjoying yourselves wherever you are. I hope you're, you're having, having a good time with your family. Please stay at home. Yeah, um, That's what my parents used to say. Stay at home to Kitilijana. You're not going anywhere. Although I do remember um, back in the day, this is, I'll show you how long ago this was. This is the 1980s. I was like in a sixth form. This is a true story now. This is not my routine, comedy routine, but I'm just sharing with you. I'm warming you up a little bit. So imagine 1980s. Uh, there was like a, what they call a sixth form disco. I remember saying to my dad, Daddy, I want to go disco. And my dad was like, um, Disco? You want to go disco? And as you said, the word disco in the back tree, there was a, there was a, sorry, in the back garden, there was a tree that split in half. <laughs> Lightning struck it. But I said, to disco, to disco jainga. Mm, does your father go disco? Right. And anyway, point of this is that it was a disco, which was for six formers and was fancy dress. And um, I couldn't afford uh, go as Superman or Spider-Man. So this is, and as God's honest truth, I went as Afghan Mujahideen. Hey, I went, I went as Afghan Mujahideen. Hello, I can hear people talking. So, I think you're getting heckled, Jeff. I'm getting heckled. Who am I heckled by? Who's heckling my me? My baby, it sounds like. <laughs> it's by my BV. Which one, number one or number two? <laughs> <laughs> number one just wants money, number two just wants love. <laughs> and that happens, doesn't it? You get the, some of them. Some, some marriages are like that, aren't they? Some marriages are about, you're working, literally working a contract. And um, anyway, I, I do love my wife. 
uh, she's she's not watching this, but she's looking after our kids. But anyway, um, oh, so I was talking about in the 90s going as to a disco as Afghan Mujahideen, which would have been unheard of now, because if you said to somebody now, I'm going to disco as Taliban, you won't get in. But in the 1980s, I got into a nightclub with the full shrak means and a plastic uh, AK-47. And it, it couldn't happen now. Right, so that's a little bit of social commentary. Um, I want to tell you a few things about myself and my family. Uh, my dad is a rags to riches story. He came to this country with just three pounds in his pocket, just three pounds, but it was good stuff. <laughs> really good stuff. And um, you see, the thing is, being that old that I am, I can see things have gone come around full circle. Like, for example, I mean, even racism, racism isn't what it used to be. Yeah, in the old days, racism used to be, Oi, what are you looking at, you baggy? See, you knew where you were. Now it's much more sophisticated. So, in the old days, when it was like, what are you looking at, you baggy? That was me being shouted at by the headmaster at my school. Um, our school was really, really tough school. I remember I had my little friend in there um, when I was growing up. His name was Pervez, a good friend of mine. It's a true story. I had my, my friend who was a little Meepuri speaking guy, Pervez. You know, when you're, um, when you're like, when you can speak English quite good and you're at school, you know the new immigrant person, they always put them next to you. It's like, Perez is coming. He's come from Pakistan. You have to look after him. And me and Perez were like, we were like, you know, good friends. And um, we ended up playing Jesus. I played Jesus and he played um, a moneylender. So imagine we're like seven years old. I'm playing Jesus. Yeah, a Pakistani guy let me play Jesus. And uh, Perez, who just come from Ipoh, playing a moneylender. Hilarious that was at the time. Uh, and now, right now, Perez is, is a true story. Perez is actually running a halal butchers in Queen's Market in Upton Park. And I often see him and he doesn't lend me any money. But uh, anyway, um, so people often say to me, you know, tell me about um, how, how other things have changed. I think that one good thing that has happened because of lockdown is I think we are rediscovering community. Um, the only problem is, is um, some of the community are not making it, you know. In the old days, when someone disappeared, it'd be like, you'd go on Pakistan. But now it's like COVID. In the old days, it's like, what happened? I haven't heard of them. Go on Pakistan, innit? But COVID is like a play, go on Pakistan. Similar thing. Right, so um, uh, I want to talk about um, my, as I say, family. Uncle Malik is uh, somebody who I'll, I will love, my, my next door neighbour. Um, because of COVID, I'm seeing a bit more of him. But he was somebody who, early on in my life, or we wouldn't hardly talk, you know, even though he's a member of my family, I hardly talk to him. Um, the only time I'd ever see him would be when there was an accident outside our road because we lived on a dangerous T junction, a right? dangerous T junction. And Uncle Malik would always be out there when there was an accident. So I just sitting at home and someone hearing the noise of an accident and going out there, and Uncle Malik, my next neighbor, would be out there standing there, you know. I said, Uncle Malik, what happened? Uh, but Six weeks later, I'll be sitting at home. I hear the noise of accident now, so I go out there. Uncle Malik was out there. Uncle Malik, what happened? Uh, and I thought to myself, you know, this is funny. The only time I'm actually talking to my next door neighbor is when there's an accident outside. So I thought to myself, I want to find out a little bit more about him. So next time there's an accident, I'm going to find out who is he, yeah, apart from this guy who gives commentary on accidents. So I went out, oh, next time I heard an accident, I went out and I said, I thought, I've got to talk to this man. So I went out there and I noticed that he had a small dog with him. So I thought, I will talk to him via the dog. So I said, Uncle Malik, ah, oh, you got a small dog with you? He said, ah. Uh, I said, hey, Uncle Malik, you've got a small dog with you. He said, huh? I said, no, Uncle Malik, you've got a small dog with you. What's his name? He said, huh? We call him Kutta. <laughs> All right. So that's a um, story about Uncle Malik. Um, I feel in a good mood at the moment because my sister just passed a driving test. Yeah. And my sister passing a driving test, that reminded me when I was learning to drive. Yeah. And I will say to people who have not passed a driving test, the worst person to teach you to drive is a member of your family like your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, please don't get a member of your family to teach you to drive. Because I've never forgotten my father trying to teach me to drive. It's like, oh my God, break my indicate car. For God's sake, you're going to hit the old lady. I said, listen, dad, let me get in the car first. Uh, yes. Anyway, so um, so we got police are out there. Have you got, where are you living? Are you living out there? Have you got a lot of police on the streets because of this enforcement of the, um, 
of the uh, lockdown, I'm noticing police are like them everywhere. Yeah, we, we, we don't have police, uh, and you know, you see them with the high vis jacket. You don't have police, you are police. No, <laughs> what do you have instead? In, in, please, in North, in North, we all mix, there's no divide. There's no divide between only people and police. What you, anyone can be a police officer, exactly. Uncle G's, okay, yeah. Auntie G's, they all become police officers. Uh, well, I, I know that down here in London. They want Asian people particularly to join the police force. They're really, they're really still struggling to get our numbers. You know, they want Asians to join the police force, but you've got to be a bit careful, you know. If you let too many Asians in the police force, Asians are going to take over, isn't it? And police stations will be open all hours. They'll be called the cop shop. You'll go in there, there'll be a seven-year-old boy behind the counter. Daddy's not here at the moment. Mommy, customer. It could happen. So, are you enjoying it out there? Are you listening? Is any, are there any, are there any heckles? Can people send me Facebook heckles? Claps, pickles. Your hat's I like, weird. Huh? Your hat's mm. weird. My hat's weird. This is this is actually a, a hat that's been inherited, man. This has been in my family since 1952. <laughs> this came from Pakistan. 1952, I came to this country with this hat. This hat is doubled <laughs> up as a tea cozy. This topi. Is Topi a bow, bow important Topi? This Topi, this Topi helps me get discount at halal uh, butchers. Yeah, so don't don't ever go. <laughs> Why do they think you're homeless? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm homeless. When you got you wanted topi, a heckle. Was... You wanted a heckle. Okay, so <laughs> what? Okay, I'm gonna give me a heckle. Then come on, give me a heckle. So I'm doing my stuff now. Give me a heckle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, you Pakistani. You know, we don't like them. You what? Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> okay. Good. I don't like foreign peoples. <laughs> this Pakistan is like really British. I don't like the foreign people. Because we've got a guy down our road, he's called King. And I kid you not, he's a guy, he's called King. And he wears like um, Union Jack socks. He's like proper, yeah. like, he can, he's like a proper pendu. You can barely speak English. You're like, yeah, we got Bre Brexit, Pataki. Uh, Brexit on China. I said, why is that Brexit? Because we got to get rid of the foreign people. Both foreign people are coming. <laughs> Both are the foreign people. I'm not job like area. Both foreign. Too many Australians are coming over to our country. I said, what? Too many Australians. They are not like us. They are taking our jobs. They are taking our women. Too many Australians have <laughs> moved in next door to me. They have brought down the price of my house. And where I live, that's not easy. I knocked on the door the other day. Now there's 33 of them sleeping on the floors. They call it backpacking. And the smell from those barbecues. Some of the English, Australian people, they can't even speak the English properly. I spoke to this Australian man. I said, why do you keep ending your sentences with the word sport? He said, I like sport. I said, well, I don't go saying, how are you doing, chicken curry? <laughs> this guy King is he's, he's like so he's like pro Brexit. We make an assumption. I'm sorry, Abdullah. We make an assumption. We think that Asian people, we think Asian people uh, are, are not pro Brexit. But I'm telling you, they're doing it on the QT. They are really pro Brexit. A lot of them are, <laughs> especially the ones who are a bit bonkers. They like because uh, they've been like you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh. We British, the British Raj. No, they were, they were they were against Brexit until so, the Polish person um, started taking their taxi British. jobs. Yeah, I I know our people are, our people do have voted Brexit on the slides, like. You know, like in the in the Indian movies or Bollywood movies, you get like there's like a conversation going on in the room, and you get someone outside going, mm, and they're listening to everything, like listening outside the room. Mm. That's what our people, are, some of our people, are like that. Mm. And they've gone down there and they put the cross against Brexit. That's why we got Brexit. But Trump is gone. Tuck me, tuck me, tuck me. Oh man, that Trump man! He was making up his own jokes, wasn't he? He's loved. I like him to be somewhere else. So um, I, don't know, I had some other stuff to talk about. Um, 
So any anyway, people talk about weddings and that. What's happening under lockdown? How are people getting married? And under wedding, under, like an English person. Yeah, what like four people there? Less in, yeah. cucumber sandwiches. Well, I, I had a relative in America who got married last September, and everyone's like, ah, oh, they saved a fortune. Oh, give me a classy batch again. Saved a fortune. They did, did it in the in the house, like the wedding. You only have to go upstairs after, isn't it? I'm just upset. <laughs> but the thing about weddings is, I like the whole thing. Personally, I love all the parents knew in 1963, the people who came and stayed in your house for what, one day, who bought something in your shop in 1987, they're all at your wedding. I like that. And what I really love the, the most is, you know the Bradford makeup ladies? Big up Bradford makeup ladies, because you, if you're a Bradford makeup lady, you, you've saved many marriages and broken up a few as well. <laughs> because these Bradford makeup ladies, they can slap it on and it, slap it on. They slap it on. <laughs> So much. It's happened to my cousin. <laughs> if you got married, could you, if you got married, they did something like, obviously, he's seen the picture of somebody and he looks around and he's like, La whole of the court, you have to leave. You have to leave the bedroom, please. My wife is going to come and she's going to kill me if she finds out I've been with you. She's like, It's a dodge. I'm not only busy. He's like, What? And she's like, <laughs> it's honesty because the makeup ladies were so good. They actually, he thought actually he was getting married to someone who had escaped from Era 51, you know, like a space alien. <coughs> anyway, I like the makeup ladies. Uh, what else? Uh, so have we, have we noticed that since, um, since this, um, uh, I mean, less, there's less Islamophobia, or is there a mask? Because I tell you, when I put the mask on in the beginning, I felt like, like I, be, I felt like I had no colour when I had the mask on, and I got treated, I got treated a bit better by people. Like I go into a shop, and usually if I go, okay, I'll give you an example. My mother is a woman; she can get home with anything. Like the other day, I went into um, a shoe shop with her, and she's like, she goes in there, yes. I want to give the shoes back. And the man's like, oh, okay, have you got a receipt? No. Is that a problem? No, no, it isn't a problem. So when did you buy these shoes? Uh, 1972. Uh, right, and uh, um, okay, is there a problem? No, there's no problem. Why are you giving them back? Because they didn't fit. Okay. She is a, she is a, she, she's got that, she got that face that she can, <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is, when the mask went on with me, I found that I had more power in a way, because when people see me like this, I'm not kidding, racism does occur when I walk down the road in whatever part of the UK, that's no lie about it. But with that mask, I just felt that, you know that initial one where they look over and go, oh, you! <laughs> and they that. You know, I just felt that racism went down a little bit because it, it masked, masked my colour slightly, ever so slightly. That's a social observation, which I don't know whether it's got any any uh, validity in the back fist. But oh, I'm now changing positions. I now because I'm sitting on the floor and performing. Um, do, we, do we like um, do we like devotional music? Do some of our fans like devotional music at all? Yes, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, because I did a movie recently called uh, Mughal Mowgli, and in that movie, Mughal Mowgli, you may you may have seen me or not seen me. I leave it for you to watch that movie and see. But in there, you know, I was playing a, a Sufi Kuali singer. And I've got a lot of respect for those people. You know, they like to put on a lot of weight. They have to like become huge. The teeth go all red and barn. And they sing all night. Ah, ah. And then the, the Kuali boys behind them. <laughs> Another guy's. Ah, ah, ah. The Kuali guys behind them. Ah. How do the people who sit behind the Kuali singer. How do they get that job? Can you clap? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> clap again. You got it. You got it. Good. Keep it up. <laughs> anyway, so um, I like Kuali's. Um, 
There's a song, I'm going to sing an English quality for you, yeah? So everyone who doesn't understand Urdu or whatever. There's a song that I know, but I don't know the words. There's a song that I know, but I don't know the words. So I just go, ah, and we're all global stars. And then we don't really care. No, we don't really <laughs> care. Hello, hello. Okay. So I love qualities. I love emotional music. I like also like um, those um, very old singers, old fashioned singers who sit down. This next item has got a beat cycle. Guzzle singers, basically. <laughs> Sare gama padanisa, sare gama padanisa, sare gama padanisa, sare da pa margarisa, sare gama. He's just warming his throat. Takes four hours before he starts. Sare gama padanisa, sare da pa margarisa, sare gama padanisa, sare da pa margarisa, sare gama. He loves himself so much. Sare gama. And you listen to what the 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 tabla guy next to him is like. Dad in the dad in the dad in the dad in the and then they have that kind of eye, they look at each other like this. I'll see you later on. I'll see you catch you later. Darigama badani is a sani the pamagari. Four hours goes by. This guy's still there. All night the guy's singing. Oh, but he's singing about love. This guy's like 84 years old. But you think, are you real? Are you for real, mate? <laughs> Who's in love with you? <laughs> so you haven't brushed your teeth since like 1987, man. <laughs> My God, you, have you got a job? Go on. <laughs> so the quality singer, oh no, the guzzle singer. <laughs> 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 and you excuse me mate can you if you got a british passport get out of here <laughs> anyway so the, the the guzzle singer he's like on for like about a week and his kids are home when's when's mummy mummy when's daddy coming home daddy's not coming home uh, he's still singing the quality his daughter gets up Goes to college the next day. Uh, his daughter runs off with the next neighbor. Uh, Quali still continues. Uh, Guzzles carries on. Uh. Anyway. Hi, I hope you enjoy. Are you enjoying this, by the way? Are you enjoying this? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Someone said, someone said this is so funny. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is so funny. Thank you very much. So um, I love traveling. Has anyone been anywhere exciting recently? Any, because obviously with the, with the COVID, you can't go anywhere. Like the exciting bit is just to, is to nip out to your supermarket now, isn't it? You've seen people around the toilet, supermarket like this. When, the, when, when we had the first lockdown, I was like that. Take your money. Take it. Take it. Take my, take my money. Take it. But honestly, because I was like, I thought this, I thought they're infected. I thought the person's infected. I'm infected. You know, now everyone's chilled out about it a bit, don't they? Because you know that, you know, you know that it's part of life now. But when it first started, I, I was like throwing the money at the purse. Take it, take it, keep it, keep it, keep it, change. Take it, take it. Yeah, so has anyone travelled anywhere recently? Anything really exciting? I went to the garden. The garden? <laughs> wow, you lucky... <laughs> you with a garden man you know that's really like that's like some kind was it like did it have like palm trees in there, in there as well was it oh no it was beautiful oh, oh, oh were you one of these people abdullah were you one of these people who went to dubai over the holidays did you no know? no like, and if like, i was i wouldn't admit it like, <laughs> I, I was looking on instagram and there's like 20 million people it's like look at me i'm in dubai you've got a lockdown in britain look at me i'm in dubai <laughs> Look at me. I'm like, yeah, I'm hoping that you can't come back. I'm, I'm hoping that like, it'd be like May. It'll be like, look at me. I'm stuck in Dubai. Get me out. <laughs> yeah. So, but I feel sorry for, for some people, like, you know, especially like illegals, you know, because they can't get a job anyway, right? And then, then uh, the things are gone down for illegals, which is a shame, really, because I shouldn't talk about my family like that. <laughs> so um, I think. Uh, I think the most important thing is relationships, really, whether, whether it's your with your parents or with your with your with your your other significant other, or in Abdullah's case, significant others, uh, uh, or whether it's with your you know with your children. I think it's all about it's all about this, isn't it? It's all about love, isn't it? 
isn't it? That's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. And I kid you not, I remember a few years ago going to America and it's after 9-11. And I was always getting hassled out there when I was going to America because, you know, for some one reason or the other. I had a little bit of a beard in the, in the early 2000s. I remember once going there, it was like, um, I thought, well, oh, they're going to check me and now I'm going to get hassled. So I had a little, developed a little strategy. So I got off at the plane and the lady said, oh, can you come this way? And I thought, oh, yeah, they know about me, yeah. And went behind the counter and she's like, okay, so what's the purpose of your visit to the United States? And I went, well, actually, actually I'm, I've met somebody on the internet and that person could be the one, you know, and I've left England to come to America to see if something can come of that because if we don't have love, then what do we have? I mean, of this world, I mean, Juliet is the East. <laughs> and, and I kid you, I went on and I went, and the woman behind this started going, <laughs> Anjali, right? Not the other word. Anjali! Not Anjali. Anjali! And the woman started crying and the guy behind him went, okay, get, let's get this guy through. Get him out of here. Sounds like an expensive date. And then uh, the next time I tried to go to America, I did this, uh, you know, I did this. As I got off the plane, I thought they're going to search me now. So I thought, okay, let's go with this. So I got off the plane, I was like, hello. I thought, what's the purpose of your visit to the United States? I was like, mm, you want to know, don't you? <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I love America, especially American guys. I love them. Can you search me, please? Will you search me? Please search me. <laughs> no, no one searched me. This works every time. <laughs> Try that one. And then the next time I went to America, I thought, I can't do these tricks anymore. Pretend I'm in love, pretend I'm slightly. I thought, I know, I'm going to be as American as possible. And you cannot get much more American than a cowboy. So as I came through, as I walked through, as I walked through, I went, hee haw! Hee haw! Hee haw! I'm American, yeah, hee haw! Hee haw! What did he say, Chuck? I don't think he said, hee haw! <laughs> Jihad. Oh. Okay. Do you, do you want any more? Did you, you had enough? Do you give up? Do you give up? You did a good good twenty five session there. Did I? Okay. Well, yeah. Yes. Did but did you laugh? Did you laugh in the right place? I laughed. Oh, I, I laughed. laughed. Yeah, well. I hope not yeah, I hope I've not offended anyone. Uh, especially that joke about lockdown uh, yeah you'd start to remember what you said now aren't you so i really enjoyed myself yeah i i i really enjoyed myself so much you know and um uh, let's do this thing again sometime yeah fantastic yeah. well, then, well thank like you very live much. as you know <laughs> yes <laughs> well uh, ladies and gentlemen as, Abdullah, as i say to abdullah Afzal, marry early, marry often. <laughs> oh, God. Great <laughs> advice, as always. Uh, Jeff Mirza, everybody, the living legend. Uh, fantastic uh, comedian. He's been around for a long time, as you can tell, experience. But this is new for everyone, doing stand-up comedian uh, comedy in front, of a, in front of a screen, <laughs> sat on the floor. I'm sitting on the floor. I'm a right pendu. I'm sitting yeah. on the floor. I'm sitting on the floor on a poof. A silver poof. <laughs> This is my poof. Look, this is this is my prop. Yeah. This is my prop. Uh, and, and you're not wearing any of your shiny little blazers. Jeff always wears something ridiculous, like a purple blazer or a gr bright green blazer, yellow blazer. Yeah. No, no, none of that today. No, I I'd, 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 no man, no man. No man, change now. You've grown up. Change now, bro. I changed now, bro. You know, bro. Bro. Oh, well, brilliant. Uh, well, up, once again. From Bradford, bro. Uh, Bradford, man, man, you're massive, bro. Once again. <laughs> he's not, he's no, not going to go now. Uh, but this same, was Jeff Mirza. Keithley got uh, same postcode as Bradford. It means it's Bradford, bro. <laughs> Keithley and Bradford, same thing, bro. <laughs> you, do, you, you know what? In Bradford, you know, like every 14 year old. See you later, bud.
Take care, Jeff. Good night. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so that was Jeff Beazer, yeah, yeah. everybody. I hope you enjoyed his uh, 25 minutes to half an hour that he did there. A lot of fun. Obviously, it is a challenge to do it without a live audience, without the laughter. Um, but he's done a fantastic job. I hope you all, all, everyone enjoyed it. Uh, remember uh, to check the schedule for the rest of MacFest. We've got some fantastic things coming up in the programme, uh, such as tomorrow. We've got the Muslim convert uh, session tomorrow as well. So please check that out. Um, and a big shout out to the organisers. Uh, they've done a fantastic job as always, especially during such bleak times. I know uh, that many people will use this as, as, as a way to... Um, you know, get out, although they're physically still at home, uh, to watch other people come on in and have discussions and think it feels really good for some people, especially for people's mental health. So a big round of applause for all of those uh, guys in the back who have put this together. Uh, of course, the Queen herself as well, Kesra, who, who, who put so much uh, work and time into this. Thank you so much. I've been Abdullah Asal. I will see you at the Berry MacFest as well as the Arab Heritage um MacFest later on in the year. Until then, I've been Abdullah Afsal. That was Jeff Mirza. Join us again. Good night and assalamu alaikum.